Hello everyone, and um, welcome to the fifth episode in our introduction to pro, uh, scripting on Roblox series. Um, by the way, the answer to the last episode's question that I gave you all to post at the end of the video in the comments was 32. So if you got 32, uh, congratulations, you are well on your way. If you didn't get 32, then I'd like to um, invite you to watch the episode again, um, and possibly post in the comments in this episode, or actually, no, preferably the last episode, uh, what it is you did to arrive to the answer you got to, because something you did wasn't quite right, and I'd like to help you get through that, and I'm sure there's other people that could read your comment and help you. Guys, remember, we are a constructive group of people. We're go not going to lambast or trash somebody who might have gotten the answer wrong. Let's help them out, because who knows, helping them out might ha help us to solve the cure for cancer or something else. And change the world because there's a lot of wonderful people and you can't really know them just by looking at them on the internet all right all right in this episode we're going to be talking about another form of what we call primitive variables and primitive variables by the way are sort of things that um, always exist no matter what you're doing and um, we've already covered two of these two of these have been strings and numbers and really there's only one more when it comes to Lua that is a true primitive value. And we're going to be talking about that, that today. And it is called a Boolean. Booleans, as I'm opening up a script so I can kind of type this along. So we've already discussed, hold on. We've already discussed primitives. I'm gonna, I'm gonna also discuss comments in this episode. All right, cause this one's gonna be a little bit shorter. So let's discuss comments. In Lua, these things are called comments. comments are typically going to show up as green unless you customize your editor. What a comment is, is it's a piece of text that Lua will literally not care about. It's going to act as if that text was never there when it's actually executing. Um, so anything that shows up in your comment color is going to be treated as if it doesn't exist by Lua. Now, the way to create a comment is as follows. If you want a single line comment, meaning from wherever the comment starts to the end of the line, then you just put two uh, hyphens together. And in Lua, this automatically will create a, com a single line comment. So that means, hello world. See how hello is on the same line as these two? Well, this is green because that's the color of my um, comments. And it is still part of the comment, but on the next line, world is white because it's no longer part of the comment. It's not on the same line. But what if we wanted hello world on different lines to be in the same comment? Well, we just have to put two brackets after those two hyphens, and then at the end of our multi-line, what is called a multi-line comment, oops, we would put, come on, two more brackets. Okay, two more brackets to close off, and now anything after those two brackets is typed as so. Now, a common practice, though, for brackets to look more clean and to look simpler is to put two hyphens before the closing brackets. This still means anything after the closing brackets is not in the comment. However, putting those two hyphens before the closing brackets just helps to make the uh, comment look more formatted. So I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to write this single line comment multiple lines comment like so okay so now we remember what comments look like and just remember that Lua will literally take out whatever is in a comment and it will not pay any attention to it at all. It'll act as if it's not there. It doesn't even act like it's a space, okay? So if we had um, something like print and then a multi-line comment, which multi-line comments don't have to be multi-line. It just goes until it sees two closing brackets, okay? So if we had something like this and we went um, hello world here and then close it and then typed what's up here and we printed this by clearing our output and then uh, test run we would only get what's up we wouldn't get hello world and the reason for that is Lua is treating hello world 
as if it doesn't exist. And if we actually put it in between what's up and this, like if we did it this way, and actually I'm not sure, maybe Roblox does it differently because it's not formatting correctly, but let's go ahead and test. Run. Yeah, okay, hold on. It won't, it won't work like that. Um, anyway, this acts as if hello world is not there, okay? Let's go ahead and remove that. Back to what I was saying, the booleans. Okay, so we've already covered primitives. Things that are always available. Okay, the first one was strings. Hello world. Numbers. One. Three three seven. And one point three four. Or no, three point one four. That's pi. And now booleans, true or false. Okay, true or false. I'm gonna change the stand. All right. Now booleans are very basic. They literally are just true or false. And they only hold either of those two values, and that's it. But they can be more complicated as long as ultimately the boolean boils down to only being true or false. And we'll get into this probably in the next episode um, where I hope to cover blocks and if statements as well as conditional statements. Um, so it'll be blocks, ifs, and conditional statements probably. Now here's an example of a boolean. So I'm going to have local check equals true. Okay, And now we're going to print check. So if I go here and I clear this output and I press run, we're going to get true. It wasn't a string though. It's true. See how it's highlighted? We could also have false and then it would print false. But a boolean just means true or false, on, off, um, and some situations where you would use this, and we'll get into this in the next episode, is checking to see if a certain condition is here. So let me put this into context real quick. I'll probably go over a different example in the episode um, coming up, but just a quick idea, like here's basically what a Boolean can tell you. It can tell you if your light switch is flipped on or if the light switch is flipped off. It's literally that simple. It only has a true or false value. There's no in between with Booleans. It is either true or it is false. It is either on or it is off. But there is nothing in between. There's no dimmer switch. And by the way, if you don't know what a dimmer switch is, it's like one of those round ones that you can like spin and then like the light will get brighter or dimmer depending on how you spin it. Anyway, it's either true or false. There's no dimmer switch. There's only regular light switches. True, false. On, off. That's all a boolean is. Now I know, here, true or false. Only one of those two. And the reason or is getting highlighted will be covered probably in the next episode, maybe two episodes from now. Um, I'll just have to see how long that one goes. But ch local check equals true. Okay? It can either equal true or it can equal false, but that is all it can equal. And I know I'm saying that over and over, but I just gotta make this episode longer because, I mean, eight minutes, that's not long enough. But really, Booleans are just true or false. So we have strings, which are collections of characters. We have numbers, which are either integers or doubles. And we have Booleans, which are only true or false, nothing else. Strings can hold any number of characters and they can hold any different characters that you can imagine. Numbers can hold any number you can possibly imagine up to certain limits which are only limited by computers, but we're not going to get into that because you'll most likely never run into those limit limits. And then true or false is very limited. It can either be one or zero, true or false, on or off. Technically true or false, but still true or false. Okay, so next episode we're going to get into how true or false can really help us to make our code work really well, um, and it's going to be really, really fun. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. It's short. I've repeated myself a lot, but getting this idea through your head is going to be really helpful. Now, as I do every day, I want to have you guys post in the comments, true, if this episode was good, false, 
if it was bad. So I want you guys to do it this way. I want you to print local um, was episode. Actually, no, let's do it funner. Let's do it this way. Print. Okay, here. We're going to do it this way. You, I want you guys to do it exactly like this. Hold on. Okay. Local episode equal, eh, yeah. Episode. Okay. Local number equals uh, five. And then local good or, er, actually just was good equals insert here. Okay. I'm going to say true because I hope it's true. And then I want you guys to do print episode dot dot. We're going con we are going to concatenate um, a space in between episode and number. So episode space five dot dot was um, good. Okay, we're concat we're going to concatenate episode space number space was space good colon space was good and we're going to print it out like that and I want you guys to put this code <clears throat> into your Lua editor just like this I want you to put it in like this except you can change this part this local was good equals true or false and you can kinda change it up if you want to but get the point across and then in the uh, comments below I want you to put whatever the output was from your print statement I want you to tell me was this episode good or was it bad? Okay. Thank you guys for enjoying this or watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This has been Code Theorem teaching a little bit on booleans, and I will catch you guys later.